So far we've talked about how to recognize a carboxylic acid and different derivatives that you can get from it. But we haven't quite explained the name, carboxylic acid. And the acid there is really crucial. It really determines how this molecule behaves in the many situations where it comes up. So let's look back at the structure, structure really quickly, and we'll see how, that, how this discussion is going to be illustrated by these two questions in 21.4 and 21.9. A carboxylic acid has a carbon double bonded to an oxygen, single bonded to an OH. Now, a molecule that's acidic can donate an H+. Plus. It can donate a proton. That's what an H plus is. It's a proton. So if a hydrogen leaves and it wouldn't take its electrons with it because it's H plus, then the electrons that were there end up turning into a lone pair, and the oxygen then would have a full negative charge. Now, if this is acidic, that means that this molecule that's left behind must be stable. If it weren't stable, then the negative charge would attract the hydrogen right back and it would snap back on. The molecule would end up not donating an H plus. And this negative charge is stable because these lone pairs are allylic to this pi bond. They're one atom away, they can go one atom over from an atom in a pi bond, which means that they can spread out through resonance over all three of these atoms. That spreads the charge out, dilutes it, and make the makes the molecule more stable. So because this conjugate base is, more st is, is so stable, the carboxylic acid functional group is able to give away this H plus and be acidic, act as an acid. Now notice that completely depends on the OH being allylic, the uh, lone pairs on that oxygen being allylic to the pi bond. That is the case in this molecule on the right. If you look at that functional group, you end up having that carbon double bonded to the oxygen, and then the O and the H. and because that oxygen is allylic, the hydrogen can go away, not take its electrons, so it's a plus charge. The electrons in the bond become a lone pair with a full negative charge, and these are allylic to that pi bond, so they can be spread out and stabilized through resonance. So this is, this molecule on the right is plenty acidic. But if you look at the molecule on the left, the same is not true, because the OH is not allylic to the pi bond. If you draw this out, you'd have the carbonyl right here, then you'd have a carbon in between, and then you'd have this OH on the other side of that. So notice now, in this case, and here you have two hydrogens, in this case, which is what we have here, if the H were, tr were tried to leave without taking its electrons, so plus the electrons in the bond turn into a lone pair, you get a negative charge on the oxygen, but that negative charge is not stabilized. It's too far from the it's too far from the pi bond in order to spread out through resonance. You can frame this also from the con in the context of having parallel p orbitals on more than two atoms. That's the ultimate source of all of the resonance that we have. One of these lone pairs can exist in a p orbital, and that p orbital would be parallel to the p orbitals in the pi bond so that they can all overlap and create a bond over three atoms. That is not the case in this molecule here. If one of these exists in a p orbital, this molecule in between is sp3, so there's no p orbital in that carbon in between, and the p, pi bond, the p orbitals on the pi bond are separated permanently from the p orbital on this oxygen, so it's not able to spread out and stabilize through resonance. So that's an illustration. First, that's a discussion of why carboxylic acids are acidic in the first place, and an illustration of that acidity in a, a molecule that has a carboxylic acid in it, and one where the OH is one carbon removed from the carbonyl. And that molecule then stops being acidic. Because this, this negative charge doesn't spread out, it's unstable, and it quickly snaps up the positive charge on the hydrogen again. It's so unstable that it just attracts it right back, and the hydrogen ends up sticking on the molecule. The molecule does not donate an H+, plus, and therefore it is not as acidic. So this would be less acidic. The molecule on the right would be more acidic. That's a quick discussion of the acidity of carboxylic acids. And one thing to remember is how that acidity is affected, how you can increase or decrease the acidity of 
a molecule by using REO. Now, REO was a sort of rule of thumb that you would have learned from Organic Chemistry 1. So to assess qualitatively, without knowing the pKa values or the Ka values, if you wanted to assess the acidity of a molecule, just qualitatively looking at the structure, you would want to look at what atom the hydrogen is on, if it, the more electronegative the atom in a row, or the larger the atom in a column, the more acidic the hydrogen is. You'd want to look at how much resonance it leaves behind. The more resonance, the more, the more acidic the hydrogen is. You'd want to look at induction. That's how many electronegative atoms are nearby. Those help to pull negative charge toward themselves and spread it out. And you'd, and you'd want to look at what orbital the hydrogen is on. An sp orbital is more acidic than an sp3 orbital. Now this is a whole chapter, and I have plenty of videos to go through each of those individually, practice them, apply them to molecules. So if what I'm talking about here doesn't sound familiar, this is something you really should know as you approach the end of Organic Chemistry 2, and I'd be happy to send you videos that walk through that. It's the induction that this next exercise is trying to illustrate. Remember, induction is where electronegative atoms nearby a negative charge help to spread the negative charge out and therefore stabilize it. So let's draw these molecules, each of these three. Now they're using butyric acid. We talked about that a little bit in the naming of carboxylic acid derivatives video. That's really an old name for butanoic acid. So I'm just going to name, I'm going to draw butanoic acid, one, two, three, four, and we'll have the carboxylic acid on one of the ends, so that'll be carbon one. And that, I'm going to copy and paste that, so we have three of these. All of these are butyric acids, in other words, all of them are butanoic acids. Okay, so much for that. Let me number them. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, the first one has 2,4-dichloro. So a chlorine on carbon 2, a chlorine on carbon 4. The second one has 2,3-dichloro. So a chlorine on carbon 2, a chlorine on carbon 3. The third one has 3,4-dimethyl. So that's a methyl group on carbon 3 and a methyl group on carbon 4. Okay, well... In that case, in these cases, um, you, if you're trying to assess the acidity of each of these, you'd think of, you'd try to imagine the, and here let me erase these numbers so they, they don't look distracting. You try to imagine the hydrogen leaving as an H+, plus, and when it does that, it leaves a negative charge behind. So if we get rid of all these H's, and we imagine a negative charge behind, we have to think about which one of these is going to be the most stable. Whichever one is the most stable, that's the one that's going to be most acidic, because it will let the hydrogen get away m more of the time. Well, we know that in all of these cases, the negative charge is going to spread out through resonance over these three atoms. So that already is helping it to be acidic. But how can we spread the negative charge out even more? We can spread the negative charge out even more by using the pull of electronegative elements. Chlorine is electronegative, and usually we just think of it pulling on one bond, but it does create a little bit of effect further off. Here, this chlorine will help to spread the negative charge out a tiny, tiny bit by pulling it towards itself. And that action of an electronegative atom across multiple bonds is induction. Now, this other chlorine is too far away. Really, the biggest charge is right here. It maybe acts a little bit there, but it's so far from the negative charge that it doesn't really pull any negative charge towards itself. So that second chlorine does not really help to spread the negative charge out. If we look at the middle one, this chlorine again helps to spread it out towards itself. The other one, tiny, tiny bit, helps to pull it toward itself. It's further away, so it's, the effect is not as big, but it does work a little bit. And here, we don't have any electronegative elements. We have methyl groups, and those do not those methyl groups would not, um, would not, are not electronegative, and so they don't pull electrons to themselves at all. So we can see that on this molecule on the right, the charge is spread out the least. 
that makes this the least stable. And that means it's going to steal back the H plus more often, so it'll be the least acidic. On the other hand, this molecule spreads it out the most. In this molecule, the negative charge is spread out the most through induction. That means it's the most stable. That means it isn't going to try to stick to get that H plus back to stabilize the negative charge. So it'll let the H plus go away, and that makes it the most acidic of these three. And then this one would be in between. So you can think about electronegative atoms nearby a carboxylic acid, making that carboxylic acid more acidic. And B is trying to illustrate that same thing. So I'm going to make this a little smaller so we've got some room to deal with, to work with. And in B, they give us three different molecules. We need to say which is most acidic, which is least acidic. The backbone that they give us is propionic acid. Now that's an old name for propanoic acid. That's a common name for propanoic acid. So I'm going to draw propanoic acid. And I'm going to draw it th three times. Once for each of these different molecules that are all propanoic acids. So that's those backbones. Then one of the molecules is going to have bromine on carbon number three. So that's a bromine. Another one will have two bromines on carbon number two. And the third one will have two bromines on carbon number three. So these are our three molecules. And if we want to know which is most acidic, which is least acidic, and which is in between, we just have to think about the H plus leaving. As it leaves, it leaves, it leaves its electrons that were keeping it bonded to the molecule behind, that oxygen becomes negative. The most acidic molecule will stabilize that negative charge the most so that it doesn't try to get the H plus back that left. It allows the H plus to be donated to solution, making the solution acidic. Well, we know that all in any carboxylic acid, this negative charge is going to be spread out through resonance. The lone pairs are allylic to the pi bond. Now, each of these will spread the negative charge out a little bit. The bromine will pull a little electron density to itself. These two bromines will also pull a little electron density to themselves. But the bromine that the molecule has two bromines close by, that will pull much more electron density to itself. So this molecule in the middle has the negative charge most spread out. pull of these, because the bromines here, the electronegative elements are closer to the negative charge, they pull it better. So it's most spread out. And so that is the most stable conjugate base, which means the original molecule was the most acidic. This one spreads it out a little bit. The bromines are further away, so their pull on the negative charge is weaker, so it's not quite as much as here. Here, you only have one bromine and it's further away. So in that case, that bromine pulls the least on the negative charge, and the negative charge is the least spread out of these three molecules, which means it's the least stable. And that means it's going to try to snatch back the H plus that left to help stabilize this negative charge more often. So this is going to be least acidic because it won't allow the H plus to leave as often. In other words, it won't be as strong of an acid. This is just a quick discussion of what makes carboxylic acids acidic in the first place, and also how you can affect the acidity of carboxylic acids um, by adding these electronegative elements nearby. And just to illustrate, maybe with a more dramatic, a more dramatic story, this is vinegar, acetic acid, ethanoic acid. You can, it's acidic, sure, but you can like pour it on your skin. You can put it on a salad, put it in your mouth. Vinegar. If you take vinegar and you put three fluorines, very electronegative elements, 
on the carbon. That uses induction to, you know, we know this, the negative charge that would be left behind gets spread out over those atoms. That uses induction to spread negative charge over all three of these atoms a lot. That really stabilizes the negative charge, and this is extremely, extremely acidic. This is trifluoroacetic acid. You'll see that in labs as TFA, trifluoroacetic acid. The first time I was trained on that, uh, the, the fellow training me said, you never want to take this out of the fume hood. If you breathe it in, your nose will instantly start gushing it with blood and you may never smell again. Now, this molecule is, is vinegar. You can put it on a salad, add three fluorines, and you can see the effect of induction, where so much so that if you breathe it in, you may never smell again. So that's what these, this second exercise, 21.9, is trying to illustrate, the power of that induction to change 